I've been working with the Visual Snow Initiative and with Alan White, a new ophthalmologist in Melbourne in Australia, on getting an ICD-11 code for Visual Snow Syndrome. What does that mean? ICD is the classification system the World Health Organization uses to classify diseases. Do you have diabetes, do you have epilepsy? It's used all over the world. It's used by everybody. It's used by every government to classify who's got what and to make plans in healthcare systems and so forth. If you go into a doctor and they're using one of these electronic medical record systems, almost certainly what they code you as is the ICD code. So if you go to a doctor and you have something that doesn't exist, that's a real problem. To get talk to governments about something that doesn't exist in their list is a real problem. To talk to industry, talk to everybody about something that seems like it doesn't exist. You know, people look and oh, it doesn't exist. So what it seems ridiculous for something that clearly does exist to say this, but the ICD code, make it exist, puts it on the map, means that any person who puts that in and gets this will get the code and they'll they can they can sort of wobble around as much as they like, but that means the World Health Organization thinks it's a thing. And that really gets to gets you to a new level. The advantage to patients of having an ICD uh, code is that whenever they, if they say they have a problem, they see a physician, look at, and the physician looks, looks it up, the physician won't scratch their head and wonder what you're talking about. They'll know you're talking about something that exists because it's accepted by the World Health Organization. That's good for patients, I mean, rather than being fobbed off. From physician's point of view, it makes it easier to have discussion with uh, payers, be it in a single payer system or in a uh, insurance plan system, about what you're managing and what you're doing because there'll be a code, because the code exists, that's the, the, the reality of it. From a researcher's perspective, it adds to the argument we've been making for a decade that this is a thing. Again, if you're wanting to do research on something that people perceive is not a thing, well, it's, that's a very complex position to be in. But it, once it becomes a thing, meaning blessed by the World Health Organization, it's much easier to approach research charities, to approach government-based research groups for funding. I think it will be a real boost for everyone involved. For patients, from a care and insurance perspective, there's a reality about having something that's in the book, um, rather not in the book, that doesn't have to go under the other column that is a thing a column. I think it will make it easier to seek and receive care because that the first step is to get the diagnosis, get the get the label, so to speak, and then go to get something done. If you don't, if a person can't put you in a box, and people shouldn't be put in boxes, but it's the way the system works a little bit, then it's very difficult to get to the next step. So I think it's going to open doors that at the moment are either shut or not terribly or, or not not well open